السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله I just want to take this, you know, a couple of minutes, and I know you guys want to know more about uh, Dr. Ali and his uh, journey, uh, building his company and building his deep tech startup. Uh, so, what I really want to uh, talk about right now, in the first ten minutes, is uh, the mission of this comp uh, this uh, this club. Um, so, this club, uh, as the name suggests. It's called uh, Technology and Economy. Uh, what we do is essentially connect you students um, as members um, with industry, with academia, and with the research and development. You always hear about uh, companies like G42, TII, um, you hear about uh, this, these type of centers like Khalif Innovation Center and other accelerators. And um, what you do is essentially connect these uh, you know, uh, institutions and uh, explain it to you guys and uh, you guys also can explain to us as members of the club. Um, I want to introduce the team. Um, we're actually a team of five right now uh, looking for expansion. Um, I'm the president of the club, uh, Salam al Haddad, and I have uh, Wassan al Barhani as the vice president. Um, then uh, Aish al Mahri as the head of media, and then Maheen as the head of technology. Um, so you can see a diverse team. We have uh, people majoring in aerospace, uh, in computer science, and uh, you know, in computer engineering. So, like, uh, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about through this club is how we talk about companies and. Uh, technology companies specifically. You know, here are a lot about um, SpaceX, Tesla, you hear a lot about um, Apple, um, Facebook, uh, and, these, and then Samsung. These type of companies are actually um, really deep in the type of technology they're using. Um, you talk about hardware, you talk about software, uh, which is um, really uh, difficult to maybe comprehend to an average, uh, I'd say, uh, person. But you guys, as students of STEM, as students of Khalif University, you would understand what, what I'm talking about. Um, computer engineers, chemical engineers, working on research, working on their projects, um, studying their courses would know and understand uh, how these companies are serving um, you know, us people, us consumers. Uh, but the main question and why I wanted to build this, uh, you know, this team of individuals in this club is how I, as a student, how you, as a student of Khalif University, connect, you know, the the things you uh, see, the research, the research, uh, research you see and read about here from Khalif University, and connect it with the industry, and connect it with the the type of companies we see here in the UAE, um, like G42, TII. And then maybe globally you will see someone who will build uh, all by himself and his team a company that is multinational, uh, that is really impactful and can, uh, you know, uh, employ a lot of people. So, in brief, what we are planning to do is uh, just for this semester three th three things. Uh, one is uh, what we do, what we will be to doing today which is a talk series where we bring on uh, people from uh, academia, from the industry, where they talk about uh, their journey, how they build their products, uh, their companies, um, how their research is connected to today's world. Uh, you know, you hear a lot about Ad Adnoc and how Adnoc is really uh, doing its thing in, in the oil industry. Um, well, if you uh, know about Dr. Ali, Dr. Ali has really uh, a lot of things that he's worked on uh, during his life at Khalif University and outside of Khalif University, where it's already implemented, his work is already implemented in Adnok. Uh, so this uh, says a lot about uh, uh, Dr. Ali. And uh, one thing that I want to just finalize with, uh, with this brief uh, introduction of the club is, if you are interested in the mission of this club, um, we are hiring. 
we are recruiting a head of PR, head of public relations. What you do is essentially out, uh, or you reach out to speakers, you reach out through email, Instagram, LinkedIn, or whatever, and you give us you know, a list of names and help us with communication and building the community of uh, students here at the University. Um, so if you're interested, um, reach out to me or, the, or Maheen or the team here. Um, and yeah, we could, uh, uh, we could uh, work with you, inshallah, eventually. Um, Dr. Ali, if you will. I believe يعني, the work that Salim is doing is incredible. So I'm sure you will support him throughout uh, the journey of the club. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes we do. I think we don't need a mic. Uh, you guys can hear me? Slides? Aisha? Sure, okay, okay. I'll, I will use a mic. Um, so, you know, one of the things that uh, Dr. Ali is really uh, into is how he uh, uses things like um, AI, machine learning, and other stuff that are related to computers. And then on the side, he's a doctor of chemical engineer. Um, there not, might not be, you know, uh, obviously a connection between the, these two, but I, I know that there are a lot of connections deep in research. But uh, Dr. Ali is actually a professor of chemical engineer uh, here in, at Khalil University. He uh, mainly works at SAM. Um, and he, on the side, builds his own company, his startup. Uh, his startup is Farman, a um, startup that, is, uh, that uses deep technology that, oh, in which uh, it helps you know, a lot of large institutions. But uh, who knows more about Farman other than Dr. Ali? So please, Dr. Ali, if you could uh, give us a brief of what is Farman and how, what is the you know, proposition, evaluation proposition. I think it will be uh, of great value. I think it will be of great value to go back a little bit before and look at the journey uh, and where, where we were and what's the reason for coming all the way to here. So actually, I was doing my, uh, my research while I was in the US. Uh, I did my research in Houston, Texas. Uh, the university is called Rice University, which is, if you know Rice University or you know Houston, it is uh, the land owned by NASA, is owned by Rice. And so there is a strong connection between the university and the space. Uh, actually, more than 60% of astronauts are from Rice. Uh, but there was really nothing for me in terms of connection because I was doing chemical engineering. Uh, going slightly even further back, I graduated from Petroleum Institute. At that time, Petroleum Institute was a separate entity, right? And so I was essentially on Adam scholarship. So when I went to the U.S., uh, I, went, I had my project on oil, right? Because I'm going there, I'm coming back to, to join Adam. That's my, my understanding, my mission. And so the project that I ended up working on, or the research that I did, uh, was purely oil. Uh, if you have background on oil, on chemical engineering, uh, the issue was simple, right? If you are producing oil from the ground, right? Uh, under the ground, it's in the reservoir, it's high temperature, high pressure, right? So everything is liquid. There is no way of separation, right? You are forcing everything together, right? And so whatever is there is liquid. It has to be liquid. But once it goes on the ground, up, right, out, away from the reservoir, then the pressure has become really weak, right? There is not much pressure. And so there will become phase separation, right? So you'll have, there is no force pushing everything together. And so the liquid will split, right? So you'll have one side which is really heavy, which is asphalt, right? And the other side is the remaining gas. So the issue here is that the very heavy component, which is the asphalt, it's literally the asphalt, it's called asphaltine. Uh, it's separate, it's solidified, it's closed the pipeline as it's flowing. Uh, so this is a major challenge to oil companies because now they need to know when is this happening, why is it happening, and how to prevent it, right? Uh, to solve this, uh, the methodology is through thermodynamics, right? You can estimate when will this happen, 
uh, what is the phase separation, equations of state, and these things. And then you can use AI to estimate how much, uh, essentially, the, the difference between how much is precipitated. Okay? So all of this is being essentially done through two combinations. One is through thermodynamics, and then the second part is through AI. Right? But to do all of this analysis, you needed to do long process of manually modifying all of these things, right? And so what happened is Adler will send their sample, uh, we will run through entire analysis of software modification until we find the ultimate optimization of the system, right? And what happens is it's used to take almost three to four weeks of work, manual work, right? Which is really challenging. Uh, imagine you are spending three to four weeks just to do one use case, right? Uh, I was a student, uh, I was, what, 22, 23 years old. I didn't want to spend my time entirely doing this, right? So what I did instead is I created a program, an AI program, along with thermodynamics. So I combined different algorithms together, and the work of three to four weeks can be done in 20 to 30 minutes. And so being a student at that point, I did not tell my professor about it. I was like, okay, I can show him double the work, right? And which will take a couple of, just one hour or two, just setting it up, optimizing it and everything, right? And the work of one, two hours, I can show him and he will be impressed, right? Because he expected this to take two months. So I did all of this throughout the entire PhD. I probably spent the entire PhD, I probably spent a couple of weeks only doing the work. I published a couple of papers, I was very happy, uh, and everything was fine. I could, and because it is simulation, I would spend my, my time across like, different countries, right? I traveled all the way from US, all the way to Argentina, Brazil, everywhere. But I only showed him the result, actually in the last semester, before graduation. So I spent four years there, and only showed the result, honestly, at the last semester, where I showed that this is the work that I developed. I only told him that, this is the work in the last few months uh, that I developed this because I understood it well. And so he was really impressed of the potential of the work. Uh, so what they did is they eventually decided that this is worth of creating a program and the entire software for this. Uh, so they created the software. Actually, they created two software after this. Uh, one is called, uh, uh, let me try. One is called Cobra, Crude Oil Property Reliable Analyzer, and there was another one uh, which was responsible for BPT reports, right? Uh, this, this work, uh, I was part of it, so I was slightly on the technical part, just helping them, giving them the code, telling them how to essentially integrate with different interface and so on. Uh, they eventually created an entire company, and they sold the product to Adnoc, to Chevron, to BP, and uh, Adnoc still are using it. Uh, and the company still exists. The company is called Innova. It's based in Houston, Texas. Uh, they raise around $40 million. So they are a very successful company. Uh, but I left the company. I had to come back uh, to Khalifa University. Uh, I had to do national service. So I had to leave the company, essentially. Uh, but that was essentially my first experience with, uh, with entrepreneurship. I did not honestly see it in any way through entrepreneurship uh, I, but, but essentially other people saw the potential of the work that was done, right? Uh, this is a journey essentially showing where it was. Uh, if I come to farming, and this is where the, the kind of the crosslink is, is through, in the third year of my PhD, I was doing uh, an internship at the British Petroleum TV, right? And there I had a friend who was in, uh, and remote sensing, so essentially GIS work. And he, he needed some help, so what they were doing is they were producing an, an oil, oil field in Oklahoma, and they noticed there were some changes that are happening on the ground, so the, the land was slightly going down, right? As you are producing lots of oil from the ground, uh, the land is, is typically goes down, it's subsidized, right? And so uh, what, what he wanted to do is he wanted my help to fix some of the code that he was writing. So I fixed the code, uh, we, we generated some good result, we published that work uh, with the help of uh, BB, but then, and I, 
At that point, the UA Space Agency was just starting. So they started around 2014. It was around almost the same time. So I came back here. Uh, I saw the potential of this. Uh, with his help, in 20, almost 2019, end of 2019, we went, uh, me and him, uh, went to the space agency and we told them that we have one, we have this idea. Uh, it is about combining artificial intelligence, which I had good knowledge of. Uh, and he had good knowledge of space and uh, GIS. And so we wanted to combine these two technology. And I wanted, to, my idea was essentially to test it on agriculture, right? And because we wanted to do it on agriculture, uh, we, we named it farming, right? So it's farming without the G at the end. Uh, so that was essentially the idea. That I, and we developed and we created even an MVP, a minimum viable product essentially, right? Uh, we created an MVP, the MVP was capable of producing great results. It can give you the yield on the ground, uh, how much of the plant you are producing, it can tell you information about the soil, how much water is evaporating, uh, what is happening essentially, when is uh, the harvest time. There was lots of good results coming out of it. But no, essentially we had one problem, nobody wanted it, right? Uh, UAE is not really an agricultural country. We spend more than 100,000 dirham on this project and the development and creating it. We spent seven months probably developing all of these capabilities. Uh, we had the support of the UAE Space Agency. We did a pilot in Oman even for this. Nobody wanted to hear it, so we did. We went to Oman. Uh, we did a pilot. But uh, es essentially, we had one of the classic mistakes of, of creating a startup is we did not talk to customers, right? We did not go on to talk to Abu Dhabi Agricultural Food Safety Authority. We did not talk to the different entities that we thought should be interested in this, right? Uh, once we talked to them, they told us, this is not something we are interested in. And so everything went to waste, right? Uh, at that point, honestly, we were about to close the company. And my co-founder decided that uh, I no longer want to continue on this journey. So I was alone in the, in the path. Uh, I was like, okay, I will, I will give it a couple of few weeks just for, uh, because I'm there. I have one more meeting going on. Uh, but then uh, we were accepted in, in another. So in the first year we did this with the crypto labs where it was, uh, it is an incubator, used to be in Mustard. Uh, then the next one we went to MBRA, which is Mohammed Barraj Innovation Fund, it is in Dubai. It is an accelerator, right? So we went actually through, I would say now seven of them, accelerator, right? But throughout all of this, so MBRI probably helped us with, uh, with changing. They said, okay, the same kind of technology can be used for other reasons, right? Uh, we eventually, if we look at the solution now, we actually focus on three other areas, right? We focus on urban planning, right? So essentially we use uh, satellite imagery, Right? And we use AI. So through AI we do two things. One is super resolution, so we enhance the quality of the image, right? Uh, but then we do uh, object detection, chain detection, so we find the information that are on the ground, right? And uh, of course, throughout the journey I got joined by a couple of people. Now we are a team of 10. Uh, I, I got another uh, one Saudi co-founder who joined later in the story. Uh, I, ha I have another uh, British uh, co-founder who joined uh, recently. Uh, but essentially because of the mission and because there was a real value proposition, maybe on the different part, uh, we, we are so far successful. We, I would say now that is almost three years of journey. Uh, we, we have projects worth more than two million dirham. And we have a project that these are like approved, secured, we started them. And we have projects worth more than 15 million dirham that are uh, on the pipeline. And so that doesn't mean that uh, every company that somebody starts is successful. But uh, sometimes you are lucky enough to, to catch the right value proposition. I don't lose hope. Well, I think there are two, two parts to this. One is you really need to know 
what is happening because you don't want, for example, if we continue in agriculture, I believe we would have lost, right? Uh, but knowing what the customer wants, as well as being capable of uh, pivoting whenever necessary, is the right track. You can stay con uh, persistent and stay consistent, but you need to understand the ecosystem and whether there is a potential for this or not. This brief uh, conversation is actually between two founders. Uh, Ahmed is actually a founder of a company who's also a student at Khalif University. And um, Dr. Ali is also a founder and a professor at Khalif University. Um, but you know, one thing that uh, really makes you, uh, as a founder, really unique, especially when building a deep tech startup, is the fact that you are actually a doctor, a professor, um, and a founder. So like, um, how did that help you? How did that, how did that expertise help you uh, when building a company, when building a uh, company like Farm? Well, I think it, it comes really into, I wouldn't say that uh, the faculty position has helped you a lot in this area. It's more about the experience and people taking you seriously, right? Uh, that is one of the challenges that uh, people may, you might have difficulty in, right? So if you go, for example, if I find, for example, uh, let's say 12 years old, right? And he's telling me that I want to build a space uh, propeller, right? That would be totally different than if I go to somebody with 30 years of experience in the field and he's telling me the same story, right? Uh, so for me, I think the credibility of the work that I did probably have given me this uh, capability of doing it, right? Uh, another area where you will notice this happening is you will see some people who have joined great companies and then based on these expertise, so you will see, for example, uh, uh, somebody who is ex-Google, ex-Microsoft, ex-SpaceX, ex-Tesla. What it means simply is just that he spent a couple of years developing himself, right? He has four or five years of experience, and now he believes he has sufficient knowledge in that area so that he can build. Uh, but then also it depends on, on which type of, uh, of company you are building, right? If you are building a deep tech, then you need a strong background in the technical knowledge, right? Uh, if I want, for example, to build an airplane, I would rather have uh, the founder or somebody who is founding the team to be a mechanical engineer, to be an aerospace, right? Uh, I wouldn't trust somebody who is coming uh, from business school to build for me an airplane, right? But if you are, uh, and so I would need somebody with experience, with probably a couple of years and graduates from a top university, have done probably two or three years of work, uh, or he is very passionate about the work and he can really see himself in doing it. If I want to build something like e-commerce, that's a totally different story. Uh, even somebody who is uh, in second year in university can do this work. Uh, so it really, it really depends on what type of company you are building. So let, let us just step up back a little bit and talk about your product, Farman. Um, so I think Farman is, uh, to all of you, is a deep tech startup and uh, offer products to a set of target customers. Um, to a set of applications. The question is, um, who are we targeting in terms of customers and uh, uh, what are the use cases of your product or your startup? Okay, so, so as I mentioned, the first one was agriculture. We have no, no customers in agriculture now, right? Uh, but uh, the other ones that uh, we are targeting, it's, uh, we are targeting three entities. Uh, we have projects with three entities that are so the first one is the municipalities, right? We have projects with Abadur municipality. Uh, we have projects with Charlie municipality. And we are building in Dubai municipality. Uh, what they want essentially is to find the number of, well, they are finding many things. Uh, one, for example, is if somebody is building illegally, right? Please be careful because we can capture it through satellite. Uh, so, for example, you have a house. The house is closed, right? and then uh, somebody is building a one room inside, this is, this is easily captured through satellite, right? So this is one of the use cases uh, uh, for a other municipality. But then other use cases include, for example, uh, they want to know how many palm trees across the entire UAE. We provide this information. 
for example, they want to know how many cars in a particular area, where are the traffic happening. Uh, they want to know, for example, the deformation of the land below, below the ground. We can tell them this. Uh, so this is for urban planning. If we talk about maritime, uh, we have two use cases now working on maritime. One is around security component. Uh, so we are tracking the different ships across the entire UAE, right? Uh, so what happens essentially is UAE is very active area, right? And so you will have ships all around UAE, right? And these ships actually have a GPS, right? So sim similar, if you, if you look in your, uh, in the airplane, you will always know where is the airplane, right? When is it arriving? Uh, it's the same story. In, uh, in ships, there is GPS tracker. Right? It's called AIS, Automatic Identification System. And so you can always track where is the ship in all times. Right? Now what happens is some of these ships, they turn off their GPS. Right? They want to do many illegal activity. Right? They can uh, uh, dump oil, they can transfer some equipment, right? some, uh, some oil, they can transfer some weapons. They can go to somewhere illegal. They may, for example, say we are going to Korea, but then pass by Iran or Yemen or whatever. Uh, so there is lots of illegal uh, activity that can happen. So what we do in this case is we can continuously track them. We can track them every 15 minutes. Uh, so if the GPS is on, we know exactly where it is, right? If the GPS is off, then immediately we track them, right? Uh, another use case, uh, for Abu Dhabi port is Abu Dhabi port, for example, invest. Uh, they have ports all around the world, right? Uh, so what happens is they go, for example, to a port in Africa, and they say, "Well, we want to invest in this port, right? You give us 99 years uh, of lease, and then we'll return it to you, right?" Uh, but the way they they do it currently is they want because they are leasing it, they are renting it technically, right? So they need to know what's the activity that is happening there, right? Uh, the way they do it is they will go to that port and they will say, well, give us all the details that you have about what happened over the last year, right? Uh, these reports are sometimes falsified. They are not very accurate. Uh, because if you falsify it, then you can increase the value of your port, right? And you can say, we have 10,000 ships that docked over this ship over the last year, right? Uh, it might not be true. So what we do is we can verify this information. So we are monitoring this port every single day, and we can tell you exactly how many ships over the last year have came here, how many containers were loaded off, how many containers were loaded off. Uh, so these are just examples of the work that uh, we are actually doing now. Yeah, um, I think one of the things that uh, is really important when it comes to farming is you're not uh, talking about, or not you're, talk, you're not targeting, um, you know, simple companies, any simple business, any traditional business. You're uh, working with uh, governments, semi-government institutions, um, and I think uh, when it comes to, you know, defense, uh, mapping, navigation systems, you need, um, you know, the technical ability to get, you know, the most accurate results. In simple terms. Um, or in layman terms, how can you explain, or how do you go about, you know, getting the accuracy of, or uh, ending up with a good uh, accuracy of, of your results? So, so there are two parts to your question. Uh, the first part may be because we are slightly different in terms of uh, the business. So, you can typically classify startup into, or companies in general, into three, three areas, right? Uh, and these areas are based on who are your customers, right? Uh, to us, the customer is mostly the government, right? Uh, for others, if we are developing, for example, an e-commerce, or if you are talking about, for example, Uber or Talbot or any of these, uh, the customer is essentially the normal people, the users, right? Uh, but then there is for, uh, another area, which is businesses, right? So my customers might be particular private companies. For example, if I am building a 3D printer, right, uh, that can build houses, then my customer will be, for example, a dump, right, which is a private company. Uh, so this is the first area, and depending on who is your target, you should know how to build the company and who, where, where to, to be, right. So for example, if I want to target uh, government, then I will join KIC, 
right? If I want to, to target uh, customers, I will join the Mohammed Barraj Innovation Fund, right? Uh, that's the first part of the question. Now, for the second part, uh, which is uh, around the technicality of the development, right? Uh, that is, is where you can differentiate yourself. Now, technically speaking, if we just talk about the typical method of uh, developing this solution, right? Uh, it's an AI, and for AI, essentially, you want uh, the first part is always the open source, right? You are building on, on top of an open library, right? And then we have our own algorithm on top of it that we wrote ourselves, right? Uh, and then essentially, depending on the use case, you can, you will have your training data, you will process the data, you have your reference data, which is the final prediction, right? And then you will have an iteration, right? Uh, you generate some result, you see the quality of the result, does it require further processing, then you reiterate until you enhance it, right? Uh, I think one of the areas where we are slightly uh, different is in terms of uh, the code itself, right? Uh, so we specialize in one particular type of AI detection. Uh, there are many types of uh, AI detection. The part that we specialize in is the semantic segmentation. Can you explain that? Uh, okay, so the semantic segmentation essentially is if I want, for example, to detect something, right? I can detect it in multiple ways, right? Uh, if I, for example, let's say I can say that this is a box showing this is where it's solved, right? Okay. This is one way. This is uh, the typical object detection. This is uh, an RCI and convolution neural network. So I think these concepts are uh, AI related? Yeah, um, they, these are all AI related uh, terminology. But essentially, I can, I can figure it out in multiple ways, right? Depending on the use case. The first way is I can identify that this, in this particular area is where solid is, right? And uh, this is sufficient in many use cases, right? For example, if I want, uh, for Tesla, this is usually what they do, right? They will tell you there is a tree on this particular location, uh, there is a car on this particular location. They don't need exact coordinate and exact information, right? Now, the second part, uh, which we specialize on, is on the exact outline. So I can tell you exactly that this is the line where it's solid, right? And so if, if you show me another object here, then it is totally a different object for me. Uh, this is critical in some use cases and not everything. Uh, but for example, if I want to find cars, then finding that this location has a car is sufficient. I don't need to know where exactly is the car, right? I can count thousands of cars without any issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I want, for example, to find that this is a house, right? I don't only need to know that this is a house, I need to know what are the changes in the house, right? And so finding an exact outline of the house, so for example, let's say this is my house, right? I know the exact, so even if you have, if you have something small here, that will immediately detect, right? Uh, so this is essentially the difference. In the first case, it will just detect that, there, that this was a house, with the new part, it's still a house. Uh, but what we specialize is finding the exact outline, which is the semantic segmentation. And so when you add this small piece, it will show that we have the small piece. And this is what we have, this is what we need uh, about our work. Yeah. Um, you know, the great thing about uh, being a professor is really explaining things in uh, simple terms. And uh, Dr. Ali being a professor of chemical engineering and integrating that with AI is really impressive to know and listen to. Um, but I think if, you know, some of the students here are uh, into academia and being a PhD uh, student, PhD candidate, uh, one question would be, okay, um, let's say I'm planning to be a doctor, uh, I'm planning to have a PhD, but in the, at the same time, um, I might have a change of plan, I want to build a company while I'm a PhD candidate, or maybe after being a PhD candidate and using my own expertise uh, throughout my academic journey. Now, um, so, now keeping this in mind, how do you balance between your business and uh, your lectures, your, uh, your uh, research, publications, your, uh, um, uh, you know, and everything in, in life? Um, because it's, I think, to many people it would be very difficult to balance between uh, the two. Um, maybe you have a framework 
um, a way to approach this? Honestly, pro this is probably the hardest part of the entire work, right? Is, is having time for everything. Uh, I think that is definitely the hardest part of, uh, of the entire journey. Because you, you want time for, for friends, you want time for different uh, things that you do, right? And still, I am faculty at Khalifa University, so I'm, I still have the entire responsibility of, uh, of uh, the department, of the lectures, of the everything. Uh, naturally speaking, even without having a startup, that is a very demanding job, right? There are perks, which is the flexibility probably, but there are, I would say, even without a startup, that is a full-time job with excess on top of it, right? Uh, but then, if you want to build something great, you have to allocate some time to it, right? Uh, so for me, I probably do the entire work of, uh, of Khalifa, and then probably every, every day I spend at least three, four hours doing uh, the startup work. Uh, I would sometimes call that's not sufficient. I end up every single weekend, I end up with at least 40 emails that I do not respond to. And so I take uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to respond to these emails. Uh, if you were one of my students, I apologize for that, uh, for responding late. Uh, but uh, there are actually a couple of students who are uh, maybe in the past or are current students of Chemical Engineering who I personally know. So, uh, Dr. Ali is here. Um, we have a Q&A in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> um, any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, uh, uh, ask. But, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I really want to know, and I think maybe most of you students, is, okay, I'm a um, chemical engineering student, I'm a computer engineering student, I'm industrial, uh, mathematics, physics, and I really want to use my expertise in my major and um, to maybe build a company. Um, maybe during college or after college, and I know you were an early employee in a, in a uh, company in the US after his graduation. So like, what advice would you give current students, uh, STEM students here at Khalid University, who are willing and um, willing to take the risk to build a company maybe during or after college in their own uh, field, or maybe something related to their own field? Well, it honestly depends on, on what is the passion that, is, that you are trying to build on, right? Uh, typically, you want to look into the trending innovations, right? Uh, so something that is catchy, that catch your eye, right? Uh, let's say, for example, we are talking about space, since I'm, uh, I'm doing the startup in space technically. Uh, then you need to look at what are things that you see the future in space is, right? Uh, and you will find many, many articles that talk about these types of innovation, right? Uh, if I talk, for example, about chemical, then where, what kind of innovation do you see? Usually innovation is simply two simple things. It's just combination of different technologies to build something unique, right? Uh, these technologies can be either something that is currently existing, right? In our case, it was Earth observation along with artificial intelligence. Now, what we did is simply combine these two technologies, right? Uh, but then there are research areas. If you are a master's student, a PhD student, then many of the work that uh, you will be doing in terms of research, you are not doing it because it's something uh, fun. It, you are doing it because it is something demanding, right? And because it is on research, that gives it even uh, better credibility, right? So many of the research that's being developed, uh, they are typically around the latest areas of commercialization, right? So you can work on the research, and then you can eventually convert it into a startup, right? And that's where many of the new spin-offs are coming from, right? But then if you are talking about, uh, if you are passionate about one particular area of the work that you do, uh, then start, dig deeper into this. Look at what companies are coming in the same field, right? And you will find a lot of creative companies. If you look into, uh, uh, there are two, two websites that I look every other week. Uh, one is definitely the Y Combinator uh, website. Uh, y Combinator essentially is uh, an accelerator in Silicon Valley. 
and uh, you will see lots of the, the new companies coming out from there, right? Uh, they are responsible for Airbnb, Uber, many of these companies. Uh, but if you go now and you search, in, for example, in this year, and you look at the list of companies that they have, you will find some really interesting ideas that people are just starting, and then you can implement, right? You can think about how is this related to the work that I'm doing, right? Uh, then if you are looking into, this is one. Uh, the other part, which is slightly even is faster, there is uh, a website called Product Hunt. Product Hunt. And Project Hunt essentially they show you the latest uh, technologies that are available, right? Where you can essentially just uh, try to look at the different technology and combine several of them, right? Uh, so for me personally, for people who are searching for ideas, they don't have their own unique ideas, I would always tell them to look for these. Uh, you will find a lot of successful stories, especially in the region here, uh, that kind of imitate the work that's being done, right? Uh, the most probably obvious example is Karim. Karim and Uber. Karim, right? Karim is just a copy of the work that's being done there, right? Uh, then, even for the work that we do now, when I developed the idea, it was, I did not have the Y Combinator in mind. Uh, but looking, looking later through the website, I noticed that actually there is companies that are working on one particular field of it. And you can always get some ideas because many of these companies, they, they end up generating lots of uh, success, right? And so you see them today in their earliest day. If you come three, four years, I'm sure you will, you will find a couple of them in the market, right? And so just going there, finding which of them is really aligned with the work that you do, which of them has ideas that we can utilize, which of them I can take it and build even on top of new ideas that I have, right? Uh, there are many of them, and uh, we have Khalifa Innovation Center which can help you on the business side. Uh, I think that is where some, some of our uh, capabilities are lacking uh, for all of our Khalifa University engineers, honestly. And this is your job as part of the club. Inshallah, inshallah. Um, I think Farman is open to uh, interns, I'm not guessing. Or maybe uh, people who are willing to uh, to work at Farman and help out Farman. Um, those who are maybe have experiences or are willing to uh, learn. Um, I think Dr. Ali would be happy to to uh, to talk to you to talk through this experience. But let's let's go through the you know questions that um, revolve around your uh, vision and the long term impact of of Farman. How do you see Farman maybe in five? or say five years, six years from now. And we'll, of course, after, after answering, Dr. Ali answering this question, we'll be open to your questions about uh, his journey, his product, and whatever is in your mind. Uh, well, probably my vision and my hopes are totally different here, right? But uh, the vision essentially is we, we want to make uh, farming essentially the go-to uh, component, right? And to this, we are making different phases of the project, right? So currently what we do is, we do the entire processing on the ground, right? Uh, so the, the current process is we take the satellite imagery. Uh, we have some exclusive agreement for this region, right? Uh, so we take the satellite imagery, we, we run it through our super resolution to enhance the quality of the image. And then we run our, through our AI component or depending on the use case with our object detection or semantic segmentation or else. A uh, lot of technical terms here. I apologize for the technical terms. But, uh, but essentially we, we take the image, we process it to find the analytics that are on the ground. Uh, what we are trying to do is we, we want to, there are many challenges across each line of this process, right? Uh, one of the challenges, for example, is the quality of the image that we are getting, right? Uh, the industry has been really great. Uh, so if we look at the changes that are happening, and this is maybe something where you, are, you should try to capture, is always try to get into an industry at the earliest stage possible, right? Uh, so for example, when we started in 2019, 
I was paying for the same type of imagery, I was paying four or five times the, the price, right? Uh, that imagery was only once every two weeks. Now I can get once every 15 minutes, right? And so, joining it at that point, I, I developed a lot of work, right? And lots of knowledge in the area, some of it which uh, is very new to me. I had nothing to do with the area. Uh, so this is one, one point, right? Uh, in terms of the vision around the different components or what we are trying to achieve currently, uh, we are almost, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we did our own uh, pre-seed. So we raised from uh, funding. In terms of funding because you always need to fundraise, right? Uh, for me personally, I put my own money on this because I was betting on the success of it. Uh, but then we are currently in the middle of the fundraise, uh, the seed round. Uh, we raised half of it, so around four to five million we successfully raised it. The other half hopefully, inshallah, very soon. Uh, but that definitely is part of the vision, right? Because if you want to build a bigger team, a bigger ecosystem, then you need always to have more money to spend, right? And that is a different story in terms of, uh, of where you start, how does it grow, uh, what do investors want, uh, to, what is the timeline, all of these are the stories of, uh, that you, you should go over. Uh, but essentially for our own vision, uh, what we try to do is, is four things. Uh, one is we are signing an agreement with the space agency. Uh, they, they will be sending CERP constellation. Uh, CERP constellation is, is a radar constellation, a SAR imagery constellation. And radar is simply, if you think about it, simple to, similar to X-ray, right? Uh, similar to how in our X-ray you can see the bones. And in radar you can see through clouds and you can see the, uh, the different uh, man-made structure. Uh, so what we are doing is, is we are sending a hardware that we are developing and that hardware is attached to the satellite and then all the imagery will be transferred between the satellites. So instead of the imagery now being transferred to the ground, and then that company is sending it to us, which usually take up to 24 hours, we can get it immediately on the satellite, right? Uh, this is critical if you want to process for a critical component, like for example, ships, right? If we are monitoring ships conti continuously, then we need to find this, right? Uh, this is one area. Uh, the other area is around uh, deep vision. Uh, or deep resolution. Uh, we are working on algorithm to enhance uh, the imagery so that it will be the quality of the drones, right? Uh, the third area is around uh, the processing accuracy. Uh, we are developing, we are doing some on our own research to ensure the quality of the work. Uh, but most importantly, the vision of the company is for the company to grow and be an example for, for other people joining the field. Of course, uh, for us, uh, uh, we are opening uh, an office in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the announcement uh, will come next month. Uh, but essentially, of course, part of your vision is to expand the company and probably one day become really big for IBM. Shall we see maybe uh, the UAE's own SpaceX or Tesla, or, uh, or maybe Farmer will see uh, up there? Um, that, that's part of the host. So that's Inshallah. Part of the Inshallah. Um, I think that ends our interview, uh, but we are ready for any questions from uh, students. If you have any questions uh, regarding his journey, his product, uh, how he came uh, you know, uh, to work on uh, you know, AI while studying chemical engineering, please feel free to uh, you know, uh, pose your questions. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Ali, for taking your time out of, the, out of, out of your schedule to uh, share experiences and uh, give us so much of valuable information, as well as uh, I'd like to thank Salim and the entire technology club for making this event happen. Uh, so I've got two questions. Uh, my first question is, uh, we often get ideas. Yes, so at which point or at which stage do we know uh, that this is something that we can actually work on? Yes, and my... My second question is, uh, I think almost everyone present here are university students. 
So what is something that you would advise that we do or what that we don't do at this stage of our life? Okay. So uh, thank you a lot for the question. I think there is a misunderstanding around the idea component. Uh, so there is a misunderstanding around the idea component. Uh, I'm sure many of you have thought of an idea and then two years later saw, it, saw the product of, for that idea, right? Uh, I have definitely thought of many ideas and many of them I can literally see the product uh, already on the ground, right? Uh, the only difference is did, did you execute on the idea or did you keep it as an idea, right? Uh, ideas are worth nothing, right? So don't be afraid to talk about your idea. Uh, but if your idea can be executed, try to execute it. Try not to spend much money doing it, not much time doing it. I, as I mentioned in the beginning, this was one of the mistakes that we did, right? Uh, we spent 100,000 dirham, probably several six to seven months on it here, uh, developing the, the MVP for agriculture. Uh, I have the, the video, it's a very beautiful video. I show it everywhere. Uh, it's, if you are joining, if you are going to IDS, you will see the video there. It's a beautiful video, but it has no real application, right? Uh, so the first component of, uh, of this is if you can execute it, please do. Uh, develop, uh, if you can do it on your off time, so throughout the weekend, do it. If it is something that is crazy com complex, uh, try at least to talk to the customer, different customer, show them a, a presentation, right? Uh, so after we did the, the agriculture one and it failed, what we did is for the next prototype, is we did not actually build anything is we showed, uh, we did manually the object detection, right? We did not develop any code. We went to, uh, I took an image from one of the partners. Uh, I went manually, draw the boxes, and did everything manually, honestly. Uh, and th then I showed, I took it to the municipality, and they, I said, uh, I have this project. Uh, would it be something that would be interested in? Uh, if yes, uh, can, can we show, can you give us an area and uh, we'll do the work, right? And so they gave us one of the areas. This was actually for charter municipality. So they gave us one area. Uh, we tried the algorithm uh, to do this. It was really complex. Uh, and they needed the result within two weeks. So I spent honestly around eight days, eight hours every single day doing manually the results, right? Drawing them, honestly. I'm not lying. Honestly, eight hours every single day, just drawing. Imagine you are drawing for almost two weeks, even throughout the weekend. And give them the result, and they were very, very happy with the result. They pay us. It was 20,000 dirham at that point. Uh, but, uh, but that showed that they are willing to, uh, to get the result out of this, right? And they were, they were willing to, they actually asked us for integration, which we didn't have even the code to build, right? Uh, so if you can do something manual, uh, do it. Uh, do stuff that don't scale, right? And just to show whether it's something that eventually somebody will want it or not. If you believe it is even worse than this, it is way too complex, you cannot even do it manually, you can, you can talk to different people, see whether this is something that people will want, right? Don't talk to your friends because, yes, they will say we want it. Uh, do an online survey, do, uh, talk to different people, uh, ensure that it is something they will pay for. Uh, and then you can essentially, if you believe that it will grow really big, then, then you can join one of these. But uh, try not to spend so much time, try to execute it, try to build a simple project. That's where the MVP come, right? And this is where Khalifa Innovation Center can help you in, uh, in the development of the company. Right? Uh, this is one area, right? Uh, and then you, you had another question that I forgot. Well, what was your second question? Uh, what advice would you have for, for the university student? Yeah. Right, so as I mentioned, it's, uh, it's more or less around the same area, right? 
it's look for ideas around the field that you are working on, right? Uh, so as I mentioned, I gave you two websites. One is Y Combinator, the other is Project Hunt, right? And you can go just go through them. Uh, it will take probably 10, 15 minutes. You will find great ideas of different companies. Some of them might sound really weird. You can ignore them. But some will, will sound really familiar, and will, you will see that this, this idea will have potential here anyway, right? Uh, and remember that whatever idea you think of, you, will, you are never unique in the idea, right? But whether you execute the idea is, is where you are unique at, right? Uh, as part of your, uh, your university student, you are a university student, so what you can do is also, uh, you, you know what technologies are there, right? Uh, if you find, for example, for me, I'm probably 10 years older than you. Uh, I'm 33, so probably 10, 12 years older than you. But uh, I honestly, if, if you look in terms of the technology, there is, I don't know the same kind of technology you guys know, right? Uh, you know a lot more about the current technology, and you can, I can, for example, for, I have a couple of uh, younger uh, team members around 23, and then I always consult them of uh, the near, the latest kind of technology that they can tell me about. Okay, you can use this type of uh, solution. You can use this type of solution. So as a university student, you know more technology than I do, right? You can search for more types of trending technology, and you can see where you can implement all of this, right? And then maybe the last part of this is to to enhance your communication uh, skills, right? Uh, I think this is where all Khalifa University are lacking. Uh, I'm one of them. That this probably is one of the hardest part. Uh, our our students are really excellent in terms of uh, technical capabilities, but in terms of communication, that's really bad, right? Uh, Sarah behind you is there. Uh, she had an amazing, uh, amazing solution, right? We were competing in, uh, in Charlie, what was it called? International Communication Government something, right? It, it is Muntada uh, Al okay? And uh, the solution was amazing. She even has a prototype for it. But we had one challenge. They couldn't communicate uh, their idea to the judges, right? That uh, they were judging. And so this is an area where, uh, where we are all of the chemical, well not the chemical, but all the engineers in the university here are lacking. Uh, and this is something the university is, is putting up enormous effort on. So when you see the next curriculum for 2023, you will see a lot of changes that are uh, happening because of this. Okay? I apologize for taking that. Uh, so this question, then the final questions, and then we're done. I think we're... Uh, okay, I'll try to keep the, the answer short. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, like that your product uh, had the ability to kind of pivot its focus. But uh, how did you know that, uh, for example, you could implement your product in this aspect, and whether like there are governmental governments that need this, like how did you know that, the, for example, ports need something to track their ships, how did you know that the municipality needed, some, uh, for example, a program that uh, was like that was able to trace houses, etc. Okay. So, so essentially what we did at that particular point is, we, we actually got it through two ways. Uh, the first way is, uh, we were part of uh, Mohammed bin Rashid Innovation Fund during that time. And they actually asked us to search for alternative kind of uh, use cases, right? Uh, so I went around and I looked at uh, all the companies in the field, right? Uh, for us, we were lucky that we are probably the first company in the region here, at least startup, no, not including the big companies, uh, that were working on this, right? And so what I did is I went through, looked at every single use case that I could think of and everything that I can find in, uh, in Google. Uh, this was the first part. And then once I found, I found something around urban planning, around climate change, around different areas. Uh, at that particular point, I went and I talked to the different people, 
I went to the to the municipality. I talked to them. I went to Tadwir uh, to talk to them. I went to Abu Dhabi Port, talked to them. I went to Sharjah municipality. I went to Ministry of Energy. I went to Ministry. so I went and talked with a lot of people. Uh, some they told me that they are interested, but we couldn't solve it. Right? For example, Tadwir. Right? Uh, they were looking for uh, to find uh, the trash accumulation in, in desert, right? So some people just go there for a picnic and they keep their trash and they leave it behind. They were interested in, in using satellite to find this, right? Uh, but we couldn't do it, so I ignored that use case, right? We can come back to them later once we have more capabilities. Uh, but it, so it comes to two parts. One is talking with customers, right? And it's never enough to talk with customers. The more you talk, the better information you find. And the second part is searching the literature, in this case. Any other questions? Last question. Final one. Okay. I have one last question. Uh, so you said about managing your time, how you spent eight hours a day for like two weeks straight. What, how do you, how, how do you discipline yourself on actually doing good work, Kenny? Um, so most of us have a lot of uni work, studying and everything, and balancing it with other stuff on a calendar, it's doable, yes, but disciplining, disciplining yourself to do it is actually a lot harder. So what did you do, or what advice can you give us for disciplining ourselves? Again, probably that is the hardest part, right? Seeing your, all your friends are out, uh, traveling and going around, uh, and you are st stuck at home, not being capable of going out. Uh, it's definitely a hard time, uh, and it's a very hard task to do. Uh, for me personally, I tried my best to do this. Uh, and then, of course, you, it will come, so you will have two parts here, right? One is where there is time where you will you will definitely be overloaded with university work, or in my case, with the faculty work. And I cannot allocate the same kind of time, right? But then I, I need to take it somewhere else, right? And the options are limited, right? Either family, friends, sleep. And so you need to organize your priorities, right? And see that if you want to build something great, then you have to be different from the rest of people, right? Uh, if you are doing the same as other people are doing, then you, are, you will not be different from them. Uh, so having that personal motiv motivation is what will differentiate you, right? Uh, all of us have the same 24 hours, right? Uh, but, and all of us has more or less the same kind of opportunity. But some of us end up going to do PhD. Some of us uh, ended up spending all of their time doing nothing, right? It's, it's really about your motivation and whether you really see something great coming out of it or not. Uh, I honestly don't have the correct answer for this on how you discipline, but it's about imagining something great and imagining that you are capable of achieving it and then you're having the right motivation as well as the right partners. Because eventually you want to build a team. And yes, I started myself in this eventually, but then if you have the right partner, the right team, then they will also push you to do the same kind of work. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ali. A uh, round of applause to Dr. Ali. Um, it was a fruitful session, a fruitful interview. A lot of smart questions and a lot of uh, smart answers. I thank you guys for attending. And um, again, I'd like to mention if, is, if there are, any, are anyone who would like to participate in this club, work uh, with the team, um, we have one vacancy, which is head of PR, head of public relations and outreach. And then if you are into maybe any other specific vacancy that you'd like to uh, have in this club, uh, reach out to me or the team. And uh, yeah, we'll do something about it. Uh, thank you guys. Can I add one more thing before the close? Uh, I think Khalifa Innovation Center, by the way, they have great uh, workshops that are ongoing. 
uh, even for the case that you had around the idea. So as far as I know, they are hosting uh, now as part of the innovation month. Uh, there is four sessions where you can pitch your idea. Right? So you can come here, uh, I'm not sure, for a couple of minutes, and then pitch your idea and they can uh, essentially tell you about whether this idea they believe that it's great or not, and they can, they can advise you, they can help you to, to structure it to a, into a real company, right? Uh, not, that not to say that whatever KIC says is entirely correct. Uh, all, all of us are humans, so we might, even the greatest of ideas can, uh, can sometimes be rejected, right? Uh, but, but they can definitely help you in understanding the journey that you need to go through. Right, and they can they can help you, and you, you may only see the technicality side of it, but they can also teach you that there is an entirely different side to the story, right? And talking to a customer is one side. Uh, what do you exactly need to build is a different side, and then how do you really communicate with them the story, right? Is is a totally different side. So if you have an idea and you believe it is is worthy, then please. I think they have one on, on 21st, tomorrow? tomorrow? Yeah, they have one tomorrow. And you can, even if you don't want to pitch, you can come and see the idea that they will pitch. So it, it will be worthy of, uh, of your time. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Thank you. Um, maybe in a talking session, if you have any questions, get to know each other uh, after this session. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we're finished for today.